Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to use my WireGuard Manager and Installer script to install, configure and manage WireGuard VPN server. One thing I want to mention before I begin is that this script will only work on Debian based Linux system. So for this demonstration I will be on Amazon Web Services. The first thing that you want to do is choose your region. So in my case, uh, just for as, as an example, I will choose the region of let's say Europe London and that will open my Amazon Web Services console in the London's region and then you just have to follow the standard process you create an EC2 instance so I'm gonna click on EC2 and then from here I'm gonna go ahead and click on launch instance you can give your instance name from here you can choose an operating system as I said it has to be uh, Debian based so I will go with the Ubuntu then down here in instance type, I actually want to uh, choose the T4G Nano. That's only available for ARM. And the only reason I'm choosing that one is because it's the cheapest. It's like uh, about half a cent per hour. Even though it is the cheapest one, it is pretty good actually for just a small uh, WireGuard server. Uh, I think with the two CPUs and half gig of RAM, you can easily support between five and 10 users uh, simultaneously connecting to your server and it should have no trouble. And as I mentioned, it is very cheap. It's almost half a cent per hour, which is less than $3 a month if you do the math or about $3 a month. So again, I'll pick this one. Now the next step will be to uh, pick a key pair and if you're in a region that you've already been to you can pick an existing key pair but since I've never been to a Europe London region I'm gonna have to generate a new key pair so I'm gonna click and create key pair um, and here I'm gonna keep it to PEM since I'm gonna be using my terminal window to connect but if you're using PuTTY you can choose the, the format of your key to be in PPK format I'm just gonna click and create a key here oh first you need to give your key a name so I'm gonna call my AWS and I'm gonna say London here so I know that this key is for my London region. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on allow and the key got downloaded into my download folder. I'm gonna scroll down here a little bit. The next thing that I wanna do is add a rule to my uh, security group. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on edit. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and first I wanna change the name of the security group. So I'm gonna call this one WireGuard. And then down here in the description also, I'm gonna change it. I'm just gonna see where I guard. Now the safe thing to do here is to change the SSH or the source to select your IP. So that way it only allows connection from your IP. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. Even though this is a demonstration, it's just the safe thing to do. Uh, but I'm gonna add one more security group rule here. And that one will be a UDP. So that is for our WireGuard application. So it will be a custom UDP rule. And it will be uh, for the WireGuard's default port 51820. Now you can put any port you want because later when you are running the script, you can choose which port you want your WireGuard to use. But just for this demonstration, I'm just gonna use the standard port. So 51820. And for source here, I'm gonna actually choose quad zeros because um, I wanna be able to access uh, this VPN server from anywhere in the world. And you can give a description for this uh, just so you remember later what it is for. It's gonna say WireGuard. And once you have that all set, um, next thing you wanna check and make sure that you're happy is your storage. I'll leave the default eight gigs. That will be plenty for a small WireGuard server, especially that we're not gonna be logging anything. So there sh we shouldn't need much more space than that. So the next thing you wanna do is click on launch instance and your instance should be up and ready in a few seconds here. Once you see the success message, you can click here on this link and go and get your public IP so you can connect to the instance. Now it's still initializing, but the chances are that it's ready for you to SSH into it. So I'm gonna go and get my public IP. Oh, actually one thing that you wanna do is, since this is gonna be a um, VPN server and you want your IP address to stay the same, like you don't want your IP address to change and you don't know how to connect, you may wanna assign an elastic IP for that machine. So that way, um, even if you turn it off and turn it back on, the, you're sure that your IP is always the same. So to do that, all you need to do is come here to elastic IP, 
and then you can click on allocate elastic IP. You're going to want to use an IP from Amazon's pool and click on allocate and that will bring an IP here and then you can select that IP and from action here you can associate that IP with your server so you can pick your server WireGuard server just build from here or you can pick it by IP I guess it doesn't really matter but um, you can go ahead and click on associate here now one thing I want to mention here as long as this public IP is attached to a running instance you don't have to pay for it but if you just hold it and uh, it's not been attached to an instance I think there is a small fee for it not quite sure how what it is but it's it's not that big of a deal I think it's like a 50 cents or something like that you're gonna have to check on that uh, to make sure you're aware of what it is but this is how you're gonna assign a public IP to your instance and then since we had that I'm gonna go ahead copy it here put it in my clipboard now go back to instance just to confirm that that's what IP is and yeah you can see is this 35 179 9337 is now our public IP and it's a static IP so it will never change so the next thing I'm gonna do is go and connect to that instance so I'm gonna open my terminal and the first thing that I'm gonna do is change the permissions on my public key since we just downloaded it and the permissions won't be good enough for the SSH to like it so to do that I'm gonna run chmod 600 and then I'll give a path to the key. So my key is in downloads. If yours is in a different location, make sure you give the path to your key. And I called it AWS London. So after you run mod 600 and um, your key is set with the proper permissions, you can go ahead and SSH to your instance. And to do that, all you need to do is run SSH dash I, and then the path to the key and then for the Ubuntu server, the default user will be Ubuntu. And then the static IP address for your server. You can press enter. You can say yes here. And in a few seconds here, there you go. We're connected to our server. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and switch to root. And I'm going to pass dash here. So that way it brings me straight into my roots home directory. And I will clear my screen for better visibility. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and download my script from um, GitHub and I will put the, the link for the script so you can uh, download it yourself. But basically this is the script that I'll be um, downloading. So I'm going to click here on the script and I'll click on raw and get the link. And then I'm going to go back here and I'll say wget and I'll give it path to the script. And there you go, I have the script downloaded. The next thing you need to do is run the script. So I'm gonna run bash wireguard.sh and there it is the script. Now the first thing you're gonna see is gonna be a little warning here. It just warns me that I already have IP tables running on this system and there may be some conflicts. I'm just gonna ignore that because this script won't touch any of your existing rules. It's just gonna add rules on its own. And if you decide to uninstall it, it will remove only its own rules. So it's just a warning. You can go ahead and press yes here. Then it's going to ask you what you want to do. Of course, you want to install WireGuard. So I'm just going to press I and enter. Then it's going to show me my available network interfaces. In my case, I only have one. So I'm just going to select one. That's an easy choice. And the installation of WireGuard will start. And it's going to take about a minute. And once the installation has completed, it's going to ask you which port you want your WireGuard to listen on. And as I mentioned earlier, I will use the default 51820 since that's what I set up in my security group. But if you want, you can use a different port. So I'm just going to stick to the default. So all you need to do here is press enter. And then the next thing you want to do is add a client. So I'm going to press A here. And then it's going to ask me for my client name. So the first client that I'm going to add is going to be my uh, Mac computer that I'm working on. So I'm just going to say iMac here because that's what my client is, an iMac, and that's how I want to identify it. And then it's going to ask me which public IP I want to use for an endpoint. Now, in this case, I only have one, so I'm just going to stick to this default one. But if you have multiple... Uh, IPs you can manually type in the IP you want to use as an endpoint so it should it, it, it just depends you know most of the times you're only going to have one so you're just going to go with the default but you do have an option to choose a, a different one if you if you have multiple so here I'm going to press enter 
And there you go. My client is added. And if you're on a mobile device where you can just scan this barcode and just follow instructions on your mobile device and you'll be able to connect. Since I'm going to be connecting from my iMac, I'm just going to go and grab this path from here because this is when my configuration settings for this client will be set. So I'm going to press enter here to exit of my script. And I'm going to go ahead and cat this configuration file. And as you can see here, um, here is my config that I need to put into my iMac client. Now you can also ship this file to your client and just import it. In my case, I'm just going to copy and paste via the clipboard because I think it's easier for me to do it that way. So the next thing you need to do is open your client. So in my case, I'm going to open WireGuard on my iMac. And then from here, again, I did not send the file to myself, so I can't do import from a file, but I can click on the little plus and do add an empty tunnel. And this window will open and I can just paste everything that I copied from uh, my command line in here. Uh, actually, I did not copy it. I just selected it. So let me go back here and copy. And I'm going to go back to this screen and paste. And there you go. Everything is here now. So I'm just going to give it a name here. I'm just going to say AWS London and I'm going to click save. And you're going to see here now I'm going to have one connection that's called AWS London. And you can see here all the information that came from the config is matching. So the next thing you want to do is just go ahead and activate it and you will be connected to a VPN. But I want to show you one thing just to see that just to prove you know that what we're doing is working. So if I go here and pull up this uh, website, uh, what's my IP address, and I go ahead and refresh, you can see that my IP currently is 47416842, and I'm located somewhere around Rosemount, Minnesota, right? Now, if I go in here and activate this, it should route all my traffic via London AWS, so my IP should change and my location should be somewhere in England, most likely London, right? So let's go and see if that works. So I'm going to go ahead, click and activate. Now we can see that my connection is active. We can see that the data is flowing here. We can also go back in our server. I'm going to clear the screen here and type WG. And you can see that we have an active connection and the bids are moving up and down. So if I go back here to my web browser and refresh, that IP should change. And as you can see, there you go. This is the IP that we got, um, our static IP, 35179193337. And as you can see, it shows that I'm located in London, England. So it seems like it worked. Now, the next thing that I want to briefly show you is there's a couple more things you can do with my script. You can call it again. You can add additional client from here. Uh, you can also manage existing clients. So if you press M, it will show you available clients. Of course, I only have one. And if you give it name, um, you will be able to uh, delete the client if you want, or you can press Q and that will display your QR code again if you need it or the path to where you config is if you want to ship it to somebody again. And uh, this is all for today. I hope this was useful to you. If you liked it, please go ahead, click on the like button. And if you have any comments or any recommendations, please go ahead and post in the comment section under the video. Thank you for watching.